What if you could start your morning sipping coffee in Spain and end your day dining in Morocco without ever stepping on a plane? Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, Spain and Morocco are daring to turn this wild dream into reality with an audacious plan to span the iconic Strait of Gibraltar, possibly by the next decade. Whether it's a towering bridge or a record-breaking tunnel, this project could revolutionize how we connect two continents. And here's the kicker. The excitement surrounding the 2030 World Cup might just be the spark that propels this engineering marvel forward. This awe-inspiring feat of engineering promises to revolutionize travel and trade, bringing Europe and Africa closer together than ever before. And guess what? The spark to turn this bold dream into a tangible reality might just come from the excitement surrounding the 2030 World Cup. So, let's embark on an exhilarating journey through the captivating history, formidable challenges, and immense potential of this audacious project, and discover what it would take to bring such a visionary idea to life. Let's begin with the Strait of Gibraltar, a geographical marvel and one of the most strategically significant waterways in the world. This narrow passage, where the Mediterranean Sea merges with the Atlantic Ocean, serves as a vital connection for global maritime traffic. Its importance extends far beyond its size, as it provides a shortcut for ships traveling between major oceans. Vessels moving from the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean can bypass the arduous journey around the southern tip of Africa, thanks to the Suez Canal, making the strait an integral part of international shipping routes. Each year, over 65,000 vessels navigate this narrow stretch, carrying goods, passengers, and resources across continents. This makes it one of the busiest maritime corridors globally, playing a pivotal role in international trade and commerce. The strait not only supports the movement of goods, but also facilitates energy transportation, with oil and gas tankers frequently passing through to supply energy needs worldwide. What makes the strait even more fascinating is its complex natural environment. With a width of just 14 kilometers at its narrowest point, it bridges the continents of Europe and Africa while dividing two massive water bodies. The currents here are dynamic, with surface water flowing from the Atlantic into the Mediterranean and deeper currents moving in the opposite direction. These characteristics make navigating the strait both an opportunity and a challenge for maritime operators. But the strait isn't just about maritime traffic. It's also a geopolitical hotspot. Since 1610, countries have vied for control over this critical passage. For centuries, Spain dominated, requiring ships to identify themselves by flying their nation's flags or risk a cannon volley. Today, control is divided between Morocco, Spain, and the UK, with Gibraltar, a British overseas territory, perched on the European side. And yes, that's where you'll find those cheeky Barbary macaques causing chaos with tourists. The Mediterranean Sea itself has a fascinating history. Geologists believe it was once a lake, closed off from the Atlantic by natural land barriers. Tectonic plate movements changed this geography dramatically, eventually forming the Strait of Gibraltar and opening the Mediterranean to the Atlantic. This narrow strait has served as a cultural and economic bridge for millennia, linking the civilizations of Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. Yet, despite its short distance, crossing the strait remains a logistical challenge, primarily reliant on ferries and ships. Why is there so much buzz about building a crossing over the Strait of Gibraltar? Well, for starters, it's only 14 kilometers wide at its narrowest point, the shortest route between Europe and Africa. Every year, around 30,000 vessels pass through this stretch, carrying millions of passengers and over 13 million cargo containers between Spain and Morocco. It's easy to see why the idea of a fixed link keeps resurfacing. Ships are useful, sure, but they're also slow, pricey, and not exactly the best for the environment. A permanent connection could revolutionize travel and trade between the continents. Now, 
What about a bridge? Sounds straightforward, right? After all, we've built incredible ones before. Like the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which spans a jaw-dropping 55 kilometers. But the Strait of Gibraltar brings its own set of challenges. For one, there's the wind. The Levante and Poniente winds can gust up to 72 kilometers per hour, making the crossing a wild ride. Bridges like France's Milau Viaduct can handle strong winds, so that's not a deal breaker. The real kicker? It's what lies beneath the surface. The Strait's seabed is deep and unpredictable, with plunges of up to 900 meters. That's not just deep, it's a nightmare for engineers trying to anchor bridge pillars. Add in the tectonic plates shifting between Europe and Africa, and you've got a recipe for serious design hurdles. It's not impossible, but it's far from easy. Add to that the need for massive clearance for giant ships to pass underneath. Constructing bridge pillars at such depths is a Herculean task. The water pressure alone, 30 times what you feel at sea level, would crush most materials. And let's not forget the seabed, with its underwater mountain ranges and mud volcanoes. Oh, and did we mention tectonic plates? The African plate is slowly nudging into the European plate, right where a bridge would sit. But engineers are nothing if not dreamers. Let's rewind to 1996, when Professor Tung Yen Lin proposed an extraordinary design for a Gibraltar bridge. His vision included 910-meter-tall towers, which would have been the tallest structures ever built at the time. It wasn't just ambitious, it was revolutionary. But as breathtaking as this idea was, it remained more of a thought experiment than a feasible plan. The sheer scale, coupled with the engineering and environmental challenges, kept it firmly in the what-if category. Another bold idea came from architect Eugene Tsui, who envisioned a floating and submerged bridge. Picture this, a structure connected to an artificial island in the Mediterranean, blending cutting-edge technology with futuristic design. It was as innovative as it was imaginative, showcasing human ingenuity at its finest. But, like Lin's design, it highlighted the immense obstacles posed by this unique region. The deep waters, shifting tectonic plates, and fierce ocean currents made such visions almost impossible to realize. With bridges looking like a far stretch, what about a tunnel? This isn't a new idea either. Spain first floated the concept back in 1930, suggesting a concrete tunnel anchored to the seabed with cables. While it was a bold move for its time, the technology simply wasn't up to the task. That initial plan fizzled out, but the dream didn't die. Fast forward to 2008, and a new proposal emerged. A 27-kilometer rail tunnel linking Tarifa, Spain, to Tangier, Morocco. It seemed like a step closer to making the dream a reality, but reality quickly set in. The challenges were staggering. The seabed was anything but cooperative, uneven, with sharp drops and underwater mountain ranges. The tectonic plates separating Africa and Europe are constantly in motion, creating an unstable foundation for such a massive structure. And then there's the depth. At 475 meters, this tunnel would have been far deeper than the Channel Tunnel, which at 174 meters already tested the limits of engineering. To put it in perspective, deeper and longer tunnels do exist. Switzerland's Gotthard Base Tunnel, for instance, stretches 57 kilometers and burrows 2.3 kilometers deep. But here's the difference. The Gotthard Tunnel runs through stable mountain rock, not the unpredictable seafloor of the Gibraltar Strait. Building through solid, unchanging terrain is one thing. Tackling a dynamic, earthquake-prone seabed is a whole different beast. Ultimately, the 2008 plan was shelved. The phrase almost impossible became the defining verdict, a testament to the overwhelming challenges this project faced. Still, the allure of linking two continents continues to captivate engineers, governments, and dreamers alike. 
Adding to the difficulties is the geology of the strait. Beneath the seabed, there's a mix of extremely hard rock and unstable sediment, which makes digging a tunnel a complete nightmare. Imagine trying to carve through solid stone only to hit a patch of shifting sand. It's not exactly smooth sailing. Then there's the Azores Gibraltar Transform Fault, an active tectonic zone right in the middle of the strait. Earthquakes are a regular occurrence in this region, and that raises serious questions about how stable any structure could be in the long run. And if that's not enough, you've got to deal with the ocean currents. These currents don't just flow in one direction. They shift multiple times a day, creating a constantly changing and unpredictable environment. For engineers, this isn't just a challenge, it's a massive headache. Constructing and maintaining a tunnel in these conditions would be an incredible feat of engineering. But here's where things get interesting. In October 2023, something happened that reignited the dream of connecting Europe and Africa. Morocco, Spain, and Portugal were announced as hosts for the 2030 FIFA World Cup. This high-profile event suddenly brought the Gibraltar Tunnel back into the spotlight. Spain and Morocco began revisiting the idea, launching new studies to explore the feasibility of a single rail tunnel. The proposed route is ambitious, to say the least. It would stretch from Madrid to Casablanca, with a portion of the tunnel dipping under the strait between Punta Paloma in Spain and Punta Malabata in Morocco. At 42 kilometers, it would be longer than the 2008 proposal, but still shorter than Switzerland's Gotthard Base Tunnel, which is the world's longest at 57 kilometers. And then there's the cost. Current estimates put the price tag somewhere between $6 billion and $10.5 billion. For context, the Channel Tunnel, which connects the UK and France, cost about $14.5 billion back in 1994. That's roughly $28.5 billion in today's money. So, compared to that, the Gibraltar Tunnel sounds like a bargain, right? Well, early estimates are often overly optimistic. But even with potential cost overruns, the benefits could be massive. This tunnel could revolutionize travel and trade. It's projected to handle 12.8 million passengers annually, creating a seamless link between Europe and Africa. Imagine the economic boost, faster trade routes, more efficient transportation, and stronger ties between two continents. On top of that, the construction itself would generate thousands of jobs, providing a significant economic lift to the regions on both sides of the strait. The proposed tunnel would consist of three sections, two single-track rail tunnels and a central service gallery designed for maintenance and emergencies. These components work together to ensure efficiency, safety, and accessibility for what could become one of the most significant infrastructure projects connecting two continents. The two main rail tunnels will operate independently, with one dedicated to trains traveling in each direction. This design minimizes delays, enhances safety, and ensures that rail traffic between Europe and Africa can flow smoothly. These tunnels will enable high-speed passenger and freight trains to move seamlessly under the Strait of Gibraltar, creating a direct connection between Spain and Morocco. In the middle of these rail tunnels lies the service gallery, a multifunctional corridor essential to the tunnel's operation and maintenance. This gallery will house critical utilities such as ventilation systems, communication cables, and emergency equipment, ensuring the tunnel remains operational under all conditions. In the event of an emergency, the service gallery will serve as a safe evacuation route, providing direct access to the surface or to rescue teams. Safety is a paramount concern for a project of this magnitude and the inclusion of cross passages between the tunnels every 340 meters is a vital feature. These passages will allow maintenance crews to move between tunnels and provide an escape route for passengers during emergencies. This interconnected design ensures that, even in the event of an incident in one tunnel, the other sections can function as planned. German engineering firm Herrenknecht 
A global leader in tunnel boring machine TBM technology has expressed confidence in developing the specialized equipment required for this challenging project. The geology of the strait is notoriously complex, with a mix of hard rock, soft sediment, and tectonic activity in the region. Heron Connect's expertise will be critical in addressing these challenges and ensuring the tunnel can be constructed with precision and reliability. This three-part design is a testament to the engineering ingenuity behind the Gibraltar Tunnel Project. By balancing efficiency, safety, and technological innovation, the tunnel aims to redefine connectivity between Europe and Africa. What are the potential benefits? Economically, the tunnel could revolutionize trade, providing European markets with easier access to Africa's vast resources. It could facilitate the transport of goods, particularly agricultural products, from Morocco to Europe, boosting regional economies. Morocco also envisions the tunnel as a potential gas pipeline route, strengthening energy ties between the continents. Tourism, too, could flourish, with British and European visitors 